Plenty of folks not well versed in the mud of paleontology think that all we have to go on is dusty old bones. For the most part, they are correct. However, this is misleading, as there is a whole miniature but growing world of all sorts of things beyond bone that get preserved in fossil animals under the right conditions. Skin can be preserved as an impression in the sediments where a body was laid to rest. Keratin sheaths can be turned to carbon sludge where they were when the animal was alive. And feather impressions can be made against all sorts of fine sedimentary deposits. Sometimes the conditions are especially perfect and allow the feathers and internal organs of an animal to be preserved in the rock for all time. And a new example was just recently published on. Meet the dog-faced raptor, Dower Lung. Dromaeosaurs are our closest window into the evolution of birds. They are the group that directly evolved into them after all. Some were huge monstrous beasts that stalked to the ground, while others were human to dog-sized animals that swiftly captured smaller prey. Yet more were tiny gliding animals that scampered up the trees to snag frogs, lizards, and small mammals. All of them were clad in a dizzying array of feathers varying in shape, size, form, function, and amount. The smallest and most airborne of them carried around a set of feathery bell bottoms, huge arm wings, and a tail tipped in a fan. We know all of this thanks to the impressively preserved fossils uncovered in the many layers of rock from northeastern China that subsist of the Daogao biota of the Jiaozhishan formation and the Zhehou biota of the Yixin and the Zhufutang formations. These rock layers are a special type of rock formation known as a Lagerstadt, in which very fine sediments in very low energy water systems quickly cover dead bodies before they get a chance to decay, and under anox conditions, which help to further halt the process of decay enough to preserve all sorts of soft tissues that normally get eaten away before the bone gets a chance to fossilize. In these perfect geological storms, skin impressions, feathers, hair, and internal organs can become preserved. The skin of frogs, armored hides of miniature ankylosaurs, the keratin of beaks and claws, and feathers of fancy flying dragons have all been preserved in the Chinese Lagerstaten of those formations I mentioned earlier. In fact, it was a handful of fossils from this region that began the new dinosaur renaissance of the late 1990s and early 2000s, causing much of paleontology to fully recognize how widespread feathers were in many dinosaur groups, and to further cement the dino to bird connection. A brand new specimen of a nearly complete dinosaur has been published that shows yet another window into the world of these animals and helps piece together an understanding of not just the outsides of the raptor dinosaurs, but also their insides. This specimen, designated IMMNH PV00731, was uncovered from an outcrop of the Lower Cretaceous Liangzhan Formation at the Pigeon Hill locality of the Morin Dawa Dar Autonomous Banner in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region by a team of scientists from the Inner Mongolia Museum of Natural History of Hoho, China. This specimen contains just about every element of the skeleton of a small theropod dinosaur. The team decided to name it Dar Long Wangai. Dar is derived from the Dar Nation, and Long is just Chinese for dragon, and is their version of Saurus. The species name honors Mr. Wang Zhongyu, the director of the Inner Mongolia Museum of Natural History. At this point, there is more than enough dinosaurs from Asia, but also a few other non-American places that are named after the place that were found, so I feel more emboldened to express my opinion that it's really kinda boring and uncreative to keep doing this. I fully understand the reason behind naming a thing after the nation or region it was found to give some press to the area and hopefully provide the people of the area with a source of pride and as science outreach to get more people interested in their own natural history. But I still think everyone can do better. 
as cool as Utah Raptor or Dakota Raptor sounds, I also think it is not quite stupid since that is too strong of a word, but you know, to name them after a state seems silly. We have so many root words to choose from to name things and people have just opted to not do that? Like how has no one used Brontodactylus, Machairocephaly, Tyrannotheristes, or Crustalotitan yet? I heavily digress. The Darlong fossil is an almost complete and articulated skeleton with a length of about 150 centimeters or 5 feet. Part of the ribcage and the corresponding gastral region are overlapped by the left forelimb. Segments of the humerus and forearm are missing and suffered some crushing during fossilization. The skull is almost perfectly articulated except for the missing nasal ramus of the left premaxilla and the partially displaced dorsal parts of the right nasal and lacrimal. Based on all of the bones preserved, the research team was easily able to identify Dar Long as a dromaeosaur, a raptor. Though I would like to note that it has an unusually square and chunky skull that I do not usually see in dromaeosaurs, particularly these kinds from China, which are usually pointier snouted or small skulled, like the Microraptors and Velociraptor groups. There are more square skulled dromaeosaurs from North America, like Dromaeosaurus and Anonychus, but not as common in these strata. Besides the head, Daolong's anatomy seems to be pretty similar to more contemporary dromaeosaurs in having shorter arms and very long legs and a moderate length tail and torso. This specimen preserves some of the original feathers. The plumage is preserved along the dorsal margin of the post-orbital part of the skull, adjacent to the presacral neural spines, and along the edges of the tail. Oddly, no feathers are preserved close to the limbs or along the belly. It remains unclear if long, panaceous feathers, remages, and retrices were present on Dar Long as they are in the big-winged Zhenhuan Long. Panaceous feathers are a type of feather present in most modern birds and in some other species of Manoraptoriform dinosaurs, characterized by a stalk or quill with the basal part, called a calamus, embedded in the skin. In other words, a panaceous feather is the complex feather type used by living dinosaurs to fly and keep warm. It's the one with a central part that has branches coming off of it that also have branches that zipper the whole thing into a single form. Enough specimens from all over the dromaeosaur tree are preserved with feathers to make the default assumption for dromaeosaurs a body covered from head to toe in the stuff. That being said, the group is old and diverse enough for plenty of different arrangements to have existed. It remains a plausible possibility that some dromaeosaurs were partially naked and that some lost the feathers on their arms entirely, though evidence of this is spotty to say the least. Did Daralong only have feathers on its body, as shown in the fossil, or did conditions only allow feathers on that part of the body to be preserved for posterity? Hard to tell. The plumage along the dorsal or top margin of the precaudal or before the tail part of the skeleton is preserved as a series of compound structures containing several filaments joined at their proximal ends, similar to the condition in the ginger-colored Cynornithosaurus. For the taxonomically ignorant, proximal means closer to the body while distal means farther away from the body. Short panaceous feathers are preserved along most of the margin of the caudotheca. For those unaware and not up to date with their raptor anatomy, don't worry I'm right there with you, the caudotheca is the sheath of elongated processes from prezygopophyses and chevrons that encase the tail. The term is not taxon specific and can be used in reference to the similar structure that is present in basal pterosaurs. For those still wondering, that just means these long bars of bony stuff that trail off the vertebrae in the tail of raptors and pterosaurs that sort of lock the tail together but still allow for a good deal of flexing. Sometimes you just have to make up new words for things. The tail feathers appear symmetrical, oriented backward and forming a low angle of about 15 to 20 degrees. Scanning electron microscopy of sampled portions of the integumentary remains failed to identify melanosomes, which are the pigment-carrying cells that some researchers have been able to identify and correlate with a color in other dinosaur fossils. That's about it for the fluffy stuff, so now we enter the realm of the squishy and the squashy, and probably the most remarkable part of this discovery, the guts. 
the back half of the abdominal cavity of the theropod is occupied by a black bluish layer, which is bound by the gastral basket, the belly ribs, and the pubis. The black bluish layer reaches its maximum depth between the 10th and the 11th back vertebrae, where it reaches the bellymost part of the gastral basket. The imprint of the partial skeleton of a frog is preserved in the same slab as the skeleton, adjacent to the dinosaur's toesies. Now that we have taken an analytical look at everything preserved within the fossil, we can do as the authors did and figure out where it places on its phylogenetic tree. I said before that it is a dromaeosaur, a raptor, because there is no getting around it. The thing has huge toe claws, as you can see. When all of the anatomical traits were tallied up in the computer and compared with trees and dinosaurs already known, the team found that Dower Long placed most closely to Tianyuraptor, a medium-sized, fully feathered dromaeosaur with short forelimbs and small wishbone, and Zhenhuan Long, a large velociraptor-sized, fully feathered dromaeosaur with enormous feathered wings. So back to the squishy stuff. The reason this specimen is so special for including the intestines is that there is an extremely small number of non-avian dinosaur fossils that preserve these kinds of internal soft tissues. The reconstruction of the gastrointestinal tract in extinct taxa, including dinosaurs, could be inferred, indirectly, from gut content remains, less frequently by the analysis of coprolite contents, and very rarely from exceptionally preserved remnants of the soft tissues. That bluish layer in Daurlong's ribcage closely matches the intestinal tract preserved in the other soft tissue preserving dinosaur that everyone knows about, the baby Shibionix of Italy. At the micrometric scale, the bluish layer is formed by a fabric of densely packed microcrystals ranging from 1 to 3 microns in diameter, which is what is observed in Shipionix's intestine. This suggests that the intestines in Dower Long were preserved in a similar way to those in Shipionix. Activity of decay bacteria replicated the large-scale outline of the decayed distal part of the gastrointestinal tract. The only other intestines to be preserved in a dino were in Merischia. The overlap in the shape and extent of the intestines in both Darlong and Shipionix might allow inference of intestine shape, size, and extent in other dinosaurs that are bracketed by these guys in a family tree. In other words, Darlong is a Manoraptoran, and Shipionix might be a Compsognathid of the Silurosaur group, or a Carcharodontosaurid of the Allosaur and Carnosaur groups. The similarity between them in their intestines may mean that other dinosaurs closely related to them and those that are in groups that diverged after the groups to which Darlong and Shipionix belong are more likely to have had similar intestines to them. If this holds true, that means the theropod dinosaur intestines were relatively conservative over time. They did not change very much as they evolved. This also means that the alimentary canal in birds may be an avian dinosaur-only trait. The preservation of the intestine but not the stomach, a similar situation to what occurs in Shipionix, is unusual but may have something to do with a difference in pH. Stomach acids may have decayed the stomach tissues faster than it would take to fossilize. Darlong belongs to the Longjung formation, which proves a little difficult to research. It is part of the Zheho biota, so I can and will extrapolate as to the general kinds of animals that Darlong may have interacted with, but there is only a little bit of research out there on stuff directly from the same layer of rock as our new blood-faced raptor. There was a paper published in March of 2022 that described some fossils of the Mochi fauna of the same region and rocks from which Darlong was found. This paper described the remains of a frog and a salamander, as well as fish, freshwater clams, insects, lizards, and turtles. These are common elements to most worldwide ecosystems throughout the Mesozoic, so we could have assumed they were present even without their fossils. An advanced ornithuromorph bird is known from these deposits, Chinganornis, which is known from a nearly complete fossil preserved on a slab and counter slab, the holotype of which most likely represents an adult individual. Early birds are known in abundance throughout a bunch of Cretaceous rock layers from this area, so no surprise there. Dinosaurs are less widely known from Darlong's layer at this time, but plenty are known from layers above it. Small Asian ankylosaurs, tyrannosaurs, ornithomimosaurs, early ceratopsians like Cetacosaurus and Protoceratopsians, and of course a huge diversity of dromaeosaurs as I went over before. 
Microraptorine forms flitted between the trees, looking for small animals to nab, while big boys ran down their prey in the underbrush. The single specimen of Darlong is probably the best window into this animal we may ever get. So good thing it was one of the clearest panes of glass one could possibly ask for. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda, Bear, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.